And now, ladies and gentlemen, live around the world on the zone from historic MGM Grand Garden Arena here in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. The moment we've all been waiting for has arrived. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Oscar De Loya's Golden Boy Promotions. Main events, Canelo and Crusher Promotions. Sponsored by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Hennessy, never stop, never settle. And brand new Grapefruit Crush Knockout Flavor. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Executive Director is Bob Bennett with WBO President in attendance, Paco Barcarce. Your three judges scoring this bout at ringside on the 10-point must system. Julie Letterman, Dave Moretti, and Don Trella. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Russell Mora. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, the fighters are ready, millions of boxing fans around the world are ready. Las Vegas, Nevada, Mexicanos, make some noise if you are ready! Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing navy blue with neon green trim, he weighed in 174 and one half pounds. As a professional, in 55 bouts, 52 victories, including 35 knockouts. Just one defeat and two bouts even. At 154 pounds, he is the former WBC, WBA, WBO, Ring Magazine World Champion. At 160 pounds, the former IBF and current WBC franchise, WBA, Lineal and Ring Magazine World Champion. At 168 pounds, he is the current WBA Super Middleweight Champion of the World, El Hijo de Guadalajara, Jalisco, El Orgullo de Mexico. Here is Saul Canelo. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black with red and white, he weighed in 175 pounds. This veteran holds a professional record standing at 34 victories, including 29 knockouts. Just three defeats and one bout even. Here is the three-time light heavyweight world champion from Chelyabinsk, Russia. The reigning, defending WBO light heavyweight champion of the world, Sergei Crusher. Centering, gentlemen. Okay, trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Anything below this line is a foul. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. God bless you both. Sergey Kovalev, amused by the booze here in Las Vegas. He knows his role. He looks very calm. And we are finally ready to go for the light heavyweight championship of the world. Canelo Alvarez, the middleweight champ, moving up, and you can think a lot of things, but you don't know, fellas, until they get in there and fight. And here we go. Kovalev comes out jabbing instinctively, immediately, under Buddy McGirt. That has been his new method of operation. Kovalev averages about 27 jabs per round. It is his range finder. It's how he lands that big right hand. Brian Kenny, Sergio Mora, and Chris Maddox here ringside along with Claudia Trejos. Steve Smoger, Hall of Fame referee, is with us as well. Kovalev saying when he was first training under McGirt, on the drive home, he could not steer the car with his left arm. That's how often he was jabbing, Sergio. That's going to be the key to this victory if Kovalev wants to win this. He has to keep Canelo at bay, that, that distance and range. See there, Brian. First big shot from Canelo. He goes right to the body, trying to land in that midsection of Kovalev. And he has a very good 
variants of attack. You can see he will go to the body and then come up immediately winging to the head. Kovalev has to be very careful, even though this is a smaller man in front of him. And just prodding out, poking out with the jab is Kovalev. Canelo looking to counter that jab already. And that's the reason Kovalev is a little uh, leery about throwing it with full power. And this is with the hook as he steps through. Kovalev not throwing the jab hard right now, but again, That'll keep him out, and that jab just missed by Alvarez. Cal Alvarez's jab, obviously very different. Kovalev is gauging that, that jab out there. He can't throw it hard or fast with power right now because Canelo is looking to counter it. You know, one thing about Canelo is that in the second Golovkin fight, one of the reasons he won was he was willing to eat jabs from Golovkin to get in on the inside. Is he willing to do the same thing against a guy that probably throws a stiffer jab than Gennady Golovkin? I think, too, Chris, he, got, he felt at least and I felt this way, too. He got to another level against Daniel Jacobs, able to make him miss, moving his head beautifully. I, I wonder if he'll be able to do that and engage that in this fight. Slow go in the first two minutes of this fight, as you would expect, as both and Sergio, I would figure, are trying to figure each other out and wonder, hey, what has this guy got? I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm really impressed with the discipline that Kovalev is showing. He's not really putting nothing behind these punches. He's touching them, just like his trainer, Buddy McGirt, wanted to do. He's, he's, he's touching them. He's not really... Uh, 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 releasing the power or speed right now. Buddy McGirt, Hall of Fame fighter, former junior welterweight and welterweight champion of the world. Now his trainer, and yeah, he was big on that when we spoke to him this week, saying, hey, baby, we got all night. You got 12 rounds, lots of time. Don't try to blow him out. And certainly in this fight, he wouldn't try to do that. Cannot do that against the class of the middleweight champion. And Kovalev is following those instructions to a T. Just touch it, baby. You can see there is there is definitely rock solid power from Canelo Alvarez. Even moving up to 175, you can see the body type, you can see the explosion, you can see the impact. It is something, fellas, that in that first round, Sergey Kovalev, the larger man, the light heavyweight champion, showing boxing poise, while Canelo Alvarez, the smaller man, is showing the menace. You know, when, when it's Canelo throwing the punches, you feel like, uh-oh, uh-oh. But with Kovalev, he's able to throw out the jab, nice and easy, and so far, at least, Sergio, control this distance. The crusher won that first round, in my opinion, by touching Canelo. Round number two, of course, scheduled for championship 12. Canelo Alvarez still trying to figure out the man in front of him for a full six feet tall. Winging with that hook and that glancing blow the side of Kovalev's head. And now we know why Kovalev was touching. See, the first bad in punch of bad intention that Kovalev threw, Alvarez countered him with a left hook. It, it was short, but it was that's what exactly what he was looking for. And now a little more steam on that jab from Kovalev. Good jab there by Canelo. Sergio, the speed of Canelo obviously stands out in a fight like this. How would you compare the speed of Canelo to Andre Ward, who is the other top fighter in Kovalev's face? Well, I think Canelo has faster hands, but Ward has better timing. And timing wins over speed in the long run. Points out that Kovalev has been in the mega event before. That pound for pound showdown with Andre Ward, a fight that he was dominating early, went on to get edged in a controversial decision. That was in 2016. Many felt that Kovalev deserved that decision. You have to give Ward credit for even making that a possibility. That looked like Kovalev's night most all of that night. Did not get that decision, and then was stopped in a controversial fashion in the rematch. Now he gets a shot. I don't know if it has redemption, but he gets a shot once again at the pinnacle of boxing. Well, it took a round and a half already, but Canelo's already backing up the bigger man. He's backing up the bigger man, but of Canelo, at least in the first round and a half, is that I've got to land the big shot. I don't know they're necessarily looking to pile up points. Kovalev is the one to me early on piling up points. Good combination by Canelo. Again, body and then head. Throwing that winging right hand. He is taking his time. But you feel that Canelo must have in his mind somewhere that I can bust this guy up. It sure looks that way. He's coming up short right now. He's trying to close the distance, but... Kovalev showing a lot of discipline. This is a game plan. Just touch him, back it up. You'll get your big shots later in the fight. 
When do you think he should unleash a serious right hand serve? Right now, I think Canelo was way too sharp looking to counter. There you go. See, those are the counters that Kovalev must fear. Right now, just keep touching your man. Do not let Canelo get off with an explosion in speed. That was a vivid illustration right there as Kovalev threw that right hand harder. Canelo making a miss and firing off a shot to the body. Very effective by the middleweight champ. One of the reasons I scored the second Golovkin fight for Golovkin is that I felt his jab was really effective. It was a power jab. It was a landing point scoring jab. First two rounds, Kovalev's landed some of them. Second round coming to a close. Yeah. It has been very interesting so far. Very good round. Stay here. When he gets low, you get low with him. But when you stand up tall, he can get under you. When you're down here, he can't get to you. Very good round. Nice and relaxed. Very good, baby. Nice deep breath right out slow. Very good. Hey, if you stay on this angle and keep your knees bent, and look out for the wide shot. Okay? But just trying to go down here early. You see that? When you're here, hey, when you're here, you can't get nothing. Okay, and just keep that jab going. All right, he can't get past the jab. Ready? And here you, here you have Kovalev just touching Canelo. The thing about power is the more you commit to power, the more vulnerable you're going to be to Second power. Up. Right here, Kovalev is winning by just touching Canelo. Round number three, we are here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, center of the boxing world tonight. Canelo Alvarez trying to make history and win a light heavyweight title. He is the middleweight champion of the world. He made indications that it might be difficult for him to get back down to 160. We'll see. Chris Mannix so far giving both rounds to Kovalev. I think Kovalev's jab has been effective. Canelo's looking for that big shot. Still definitely get there, but for now, in those first two rounds, I'll let Kovalev score the most points. So have I. Canelo touching Kovalev with the right hand, firing it out. Counters with the right hand. Everything Canelo is throwing has some real steam on it, fellas. There's no, no question about that. And that was the question I had coming up to 175. He was powerful at 160, even strong at 168. He didn't carry 275 pounds. And Kovalev coming off a tough win. He knocked out Anthony Yard in Russia. Kovalev eventually stopped Yard with a jab in the 11th. But Kovalev was hurt badly in the 8th. A lot of time left in that round when he got hurt. I thought he showed a lot of poise. He survived the end of the round. But he was composed, came back boxing in the next round. And you see right there, punches thrown. Wow, 129 to 41. That is significant. Punches landed, of course, is what really matters. And it is about even. So he did show poise in coming back in that fight. However, can he survive getting hurt against this man? I don't know about that. It's difficult. Canelo's excellent at finishing fights, excellent at going to the body. It's interesting seeing Sergey Kovalev fight going backwards, too. In his prime years, he was a predator in the ring. He's having to change that style. He's gotten a little bit older. Prodding, throwing jabs, the occasional right hand. Now a jab from Canelo. Canelo content to take his time. Although, again, if Chris, you're giving him rounds, at a certain point, you must start winning rounds. I do think Canelo's been better in this round. Landing shots like that, good left hand to the jaw of Kovalev. One jab after another. So Sergey Kovalev has stuck to the plan. Yes, he has. He hasn't committed to no power either. He's just fighting at range, keeping him at distance. I don't know for how, how much longer he's going to be able to keep Canelo off just by touching him, because Canelo is getting closer and closer with those counters. Canelo thought about that right hand, thought better of it. Part of this, too, fellas, is you have to look at how is he carrying the weight. Canelo Alvarez said, hey, this is my natural weight. However, that's not his natural weight normally in training camp and in the ring. He is walking around this ring right now a much larger man. And certainly he had felt great all throughout this training camp, not having to cut weight all the way down to 160. Only in free hydrate to about 178 pounds today. So he's in good condition. Final seconds of round number three. Tactical so far. Not Go. quite explosive. Charles Barkley is here, the Hall of Famer, round mound, huge fight fan. Always has a good opinion on things.
came here to see a little history attempted by Canelo. And here you have Kovalev. This is what Kovalev, the cautious Kovalev, needs to be worried about. That left hook right there. When he extends that right hand, it's a 2-1 that he throws. He wants to land that power jab, but with that, he, he becomes susceptible to a left hook. And that will time them just right there. You wonder when Eddie Reynoso will go to Canelo and say it's time to slap it into another gear. Hasn't happened yet. It's been patient. I don't know if that's necessary, Sergio. Your thoughts on that? Not As we yet. get into round four. Not yet. I think the crusher has... Well, look, the first half of the fight, he's going to have all that power. I think Canelo needs to be leery about the power early on, too, but he needs to start piling on rounds because right now, Kovalev, is, in my opinion, is winning uh, uh, easy rounds in the bank. Chris Maddox giving Canelo the third round. Kovalev has had difficulty in the late rounds. There's a hook by Canelo before. He was derailed by Elator Alvarez in August of 2018. Kovalev leading in that fight in the seventh round. He got dropped three times. And you know what, Chris? He was just not on point in that fight. He had that jab hung down low. He was kind of lazy with it, and he got stopped. He's not on point in that fight. And one of the issues I've had with Sergey Kovalev in the last couple of years is that when he gets hurt, he doesn't seem to know how to respond. You see that sometimes in guys that are used to being aggressive, used to winning fights by knockout. When Andre Ward had him hurt, he didn't try to tie up. He didn't take a knee. Same thing with Alvarez in that first fight. He just didn't seem to know what to do when he was in trouble. Well, that's the downfall of power punchers because they're used to doing all the crushing and the power. I mean, if you look at the history of power punchers, when they're hurt, they're confused. They're vulnerable. Kovalev lunging forward right there. It's a dangerous moment. And you see the, these are the jabs through round three. And Kovalev with a significant advantage. It's not like it's doing damage to Canelo. But he is constantly pumping it out there. And so he is following the plan. And those are j 153 jabs thrown through three. Canelo is getting closer and closer, closing the distance right now. Perhaps we'll see Russell Mora play a role in all of this as Kovalev went to clinch trying to close the gap. So that's the last two times we've seen them engage. Kovalev has jumped in to clinch and stop the punching of Canelo. That's smart. Get inside, hold him, force the referee to break it up and reset. Kovalev getting a little more comfortable now, staying on the inside. There's something you don't see from Kovalev that much. He threw a left hook to the liver. Canelo is really not moving his head as he's moving in. He seems to be comfortable because these jabs are not hurting him, and yet he's not opening up any new offensive opportunities for himself. Well, Kovalev is not committing with that jab. That's the reason he, he doesn't have to really be worried about the power or the speed, so he can just, he's just getting touched. This is not the range that Sergei Kovalev wants to be in. Two thudding hooks. Neither one of them really landing cleanly. But Canelo is starting to get a bit closer with his power shots. Wicked body shot by Canelo. Tried to answer with something nasty. Here we're going to see Canelo biding his time. He was waiting for that shot just to roll and come back with a body shot. That's something they worked in camp, came up short, but that's the reason Kovalev is not committing with the speed and the power with that jab. I think, though, Sergio, that's the first time we saw, okay, take this on your way out. Something it, okay? nasty from Don't Canelo. Absolutely, but he worked on that rolling with that shot. Here we go, fifth round now. We'll see if the action can pick up. Sergey Kovalev sticking to the plan, jabbing, boxing. The crusher has become the boxer, and Canelo will have to take this from him as he moves up. Although Chris Maddox giving the fourth round to Canelo Alvarez. Enough with those stunning shots, Chris. The power shots, getting inside, going to the body a little bit more effectively, but it's a Other than the left hooks that Canelo landed just like that, He's mostly just countering to the body, which is a smart game plan by Canelo. Now we're seeing the counters come off a little, a little more crisply from Canelo. Firing back with that jab and a hook. There's a good stick jab as he backs Kovalev into the corner. 
Kovalev looking to tie him up. No can do. Gotta use it. Gotta use you know, it's it. funny, Brian. It since being accused of running against Gennady Golovkin in that first fight, Kendall Alvarez. Hard body the, shot. He has been the aggressor in his subsequent fights. And the right hand just missed. That's a nice body shot, Sergio. That was a great that. counter to the body. And that's exclusively what he's been doing, countering to the body. Claudia Trejos is standing by. Claudia, what do you have? Thank you, BK. They're asking Sergey to just keep tabbing with that jab, not go like a power punch. They don't want him to gas out. Slowly but surely does it. Pace. Pace is the key. You can envision one of those hooks to the body crumpling the crusher. We have seen it before. He's 36. He is in a different phase of his career. He can clearly still box. But can he win and trade with Canelo? I don't know if he can take many of those body shots. So far, he hasn't taken much of anything, Sergio. But you can see that plan coming out. Well, Crusher hasn't taken anything because he hasn't really given anything. He hasn't committed to his crushing punches because any time he does commit to power, Canelo is right there with the speed and the combinations to, to make him pay for it. You know, this was the hallmark of Floyd Mayweather, sticking to his game plan and not worrying if you're losing early rounds. We saw Floyd not change a single thing in his fights when he was down against Oscar De La Hoya, when he was trailing against Sam Judah, and so far Canelo is showing that type of patience. Good body work there by Kovalev, and then straight to the head with the jab. You know, it's interesting here, and Claudia is saying it, that Kovalev's corner is worried about him getting a little bit gassed. It's an interesting tidbit because fifth round, we're worried about him getting gassed. Body shot there by Kovalev. I think that shows you where he is in his career. There's no question. And you've got to keep that energy. Kovalev certainly calm throughout the big fight week, able to reserve that. But as we saw, even Bernard Hopkins, who we spoke to earlier in the night, a master at using every ounce of energy for when he needed it during those rounds. I said, hey. Give me more thanks and stay here. Now, hey, when you get up close to him like this, shoot a right uppercut to the body when you're close. Okay, not from the outside. When you're close like this, just turn around on the inside. Relax, baby. You're boxing beautiful. Hey. Así sigue, así moviendo la cintura, así. Y en los cortitos tirame el uno o dos. And that's just one, one, two, three. Here we see a left hook by Canelo go around the guard of the Crusher, right on the chin. Crusher took it well, but he can't be taking too many of those. Huge crowd here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, the big event as we go to round six. And for the first time, we're going to Chris Mannix's scorecard and going to the next level. And we're going to shade that fifth round. And that, Chris, is an indication of it being close, what we could call a swing round or where we believe a judge, right? Yeah. Might have it either way. And this comes from what, Bill Simmons? Shout out to Bill Simmons from The Ringer. He gave me this idea when we were talking on his podcast earlier in the week, just as a way to kind of indicate which of these rounds were close. So Bill Simmons, thank you. well done. Oh, look, Bill is an innovative sports theorist. And he loves the sport, so that's good. And I agree with that. I'll always ask you, Hey, Chris, was that close? Could you swing it either way? That way, when you go to a decision, people aren't outraged by something. How could that have won when you said this? Well, there could be four or five rounds in, in any fight that you could have either way. That's because you vehemently disagree with me sometimes. No. I'll buy what you're selling, sort of. But I, I'll put more yellow rounds in there. And seriously, you at the end of the fight, and you're wondering how could the judges have possibly gotten it this way or that way, you do have to ask yourself, how many rounds could I have, it's very subjective, have swung back the other way? And sometimes the answer would surprise you. The people watching are, are wondering why Kovalev is not really putting behind power behind that jab is because the crush is not committing to that power because Canelo's looking to time him with that speed. He's been getting close with that left hook. Kovalev now trying to time up. He has not had success in clinching with Canelo Alvarez. I think one thing you have to watch for with that jab, and it's reflected in some of the punch stats, is that Canelo's guard is gobbling that up. So if he blocks it, that isn't a scoring shot. Canelo just the 
unstoppable force moving forward moving forward looking like he is closing in for the kill however it's not as if he is ripping him with shots he's showing a lot of menace I don't know how effective he is being as of yet you can sense it but Sergio it hasn't happened yet no not yet but the keys to victory I thought we're going to be just exactly what Kovalev is doing right now. If he can get three rounds out of the first six, I think he's going to be in a good position in the second half of the fight, which is usually where he gets in trouble. In round five, by the way, Kovalev landing a fight high 14 punches. There's a hook to the head by Canelo. Canelo against Rocky Fielding at 168 pounds just went right through him like a buzzsaw. That body shot hurt. Right hand to the body. Crusher. Folding over just a bit. Kovalev is going to have to have a lot of energy here. And you see right there, pumping out the jab, keeping Canelo at bay. So far. We're through six. Doing good. Doing good. Relax. We're going to get him. Don't worry. Relax. You're blocking well now. Block. And then return the point. One shot. And then the other one. And here's the reason why Kovalev is not letting those punches fly. Anytime he comes up short, Canelo comes up, countering to the body. That's where Kovalev is vulnerable, no but every the counter okay. shot is no, to the body. I got, I got Canelo is ignoring the head, just like he is right here. Just a thin. Body shot, Lilla. left and right. With full leverage as well. Seventh round, you heard in Canelo's corner, we're going to get him. Don't worry, you get a sense of that, and yet, the judges could have this right now with Sergey Kovalev ahead. He is certainly out jabbing Canelo, out throwing him. Canelo has not landed an awful lot of punches. What he has landed has looked exceedingly dangerous. Chris Mannix with his fourth straight round for Canelo. The fifth round is close. Now, I understand people watching this fight, seeing Kovalev throw a lot of punches, but as I'm sitting here, I'm seeing Canelo block a lot of them. True. And you must score in a scoring area to get those points. You actually have to strike the man in the scoring area in the body of the head. Well, if you notice, Kovalev is not really trying to penetrate the gloves of Canelo. He's just touching those gloves. He's waiting for the counter to come from Canelo in order for him to come back with a hard shot. Canelo's not falling for it, just and like that. Here are the thrown punches through six. Again, it's 403 to 175. However, Canelo is now ahead in punches landed, according to CompuBox. And Chris, it's a very good point. And as we are now out of the Wiki Wright era, remember how important that was then. As a guy like Wiki Wright would keep his gloves straight up at his face and just block so many punches. And those are not scoring shots. Look, and you could sway judges by just throwing a bunch of punches. It's a fight that comes to mind. Paul Williams against Eris Landy Lara. I thought Eris Landy Lara in that fight landed the cleaner shots, but Paul Williams got a controversial decision simply by his volume punching. So judges see different things. Kovalev only has one KO after the eighth round, and that was his last fight against Anthony Yard. His power usually diminishes in the second half for a variety of reasons. He wasn't always in the best of condition. He seemingly is now, but again, he's 36. We have Claudia Trejos right now. Claudia. Thank you, BK. Eddie Reynoso was clear in saying that there is respect for Kovalev's power. Canelo has felt it, but he's willing to just assimilate it because he wants to close the gap, and he's definitely committed to going for the body punches. That's the way for him to take the win. Claudia, thank you. Final 40 seconds of the seventh round. And Canelo, you have to give him credit for this. He is able to adapt his fight plan fight by fight. He looks like a very different fighter than we saw against Daniel Jacobs last time out. No, well, then again, you're not fighting an athletic, uh, uh, fast-footed fighter like uh, Daniel Jacobs. Kovalev is more of a heavy foot fighter, heavy hands with heavy feet. Canelo inching closer.
According to CompuBox, 90% of this fight has been fought at distance. That favors Kovalev using that jab. Right here, we're going to see both fighters land a chopping right hook. Right there, you see Kovalev come around the guard. But here you see Canelo getting it right back. Now, who would you rather be in between both those right hooks? Right here, you see Kovalev trying to hold Canelo. So I'd rather have Canelo's right hook than Kovalev in that exchange. There is the real deal. A proud father here tonight, Evander Holyfield, saw his son, his son Evan Holyfield win his pro debut in a quick knockout. Chris, you spoke to him earlier. Evander looks very pleased tonight. Yeah, we've seen Evander celebrate big wins in this arena, beating Mike Tyson, but that was a different kind of smile on his face mm -hmm. after watching his son win his pro debut. So, Chris, according to you, Canelo's plan is just fine. I mean, he's winning rounds and nothing to worry about. Uh, it, it, no? It's, it's tough to score some of these rounds, but as I'm sitting here close to it, a lot of these Kovalev punches are just hitting the guard of Canelo. Now, this round early on, he's landed some jabs at the cleaner, but for the last few no. rounds, what I've seen has been Canelo kind of parrying them away or absorbing them into his guard. That's not a scoring punch. Canelo throwing harder hooks now. Tries to move in behind the jab. Now, his corner might say they respect Kovalev's power. He hasn't just come marching through. However, he's not really even showing the head movement that he would need against a power puncher. Sergio just really walking in. Here the power punches landed, 52 to 28 in favor of Canelo. That points to a clear-cut win. I respect the game plan that Kovalev has. I know what he's trying to do, but he's not winning these last couple of rounds. Canelo's just, his pressure and coming forward and the explosiveness of Canelo just winning these rounds in the, in the end. Final half of round eight. Ooh, and there's a jab that moves Canelo back. We wanted to see if Canelo Alvarez could take the shot of a full-size light heavyweight. I think that is obvious that he can, although we really don't know the level of power from Kovalev here tonight. Does come off a knockout in his last fight. Still a big, strong man, but we haven't seen much explosion out of Kovalev. It's a very good round, though, so far for Sergey Kovalev. He has landed. The Canelo punch has opened up a little bit right now. He's the one back to Canelo. And Canelo has to spin out of that, moving back from the right hand. It almost feels like Canelo's taking this round off. And the crowd letting him hear it a little bit. As the action ebbs, I think everybody was fine with patience early on. But if he's... I mean, you have to ask yourself at a certain point, is he winning? or is he winning impressively? And those could be two different things. Body shot tried there by Koval, a quick answer by Canelo with the hook. Now this, Brian, reminds me of the first Golovkin fight. When Canelo fought the back end of it off the ropes and tried to counter punch Golovkin. He's trying to go the power puncher to come in. If he can't chase him down, he wants the, 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 the pressure to come at him to try to counter a power shot. You think he's setting traps? He's setting traps. He's, he's definitely playing pass him against the ropes. Better round for Kovalev, certainly there in round number eight. When he goes to the side, oh, Jason, cut it. Touch him and touch him, all right? Canelo Alvarez made his pro debut at the age of 15. He was 139 pounds. 
That was way back in 2005. I mentioned earlier, he seemed natural at 154, but he is thick and strong enough to be the boss at 160. We go to the ninth round here. Is he thick and strong enough, Sergio, to be the boss at 175? Well, he proved against a bigger Daniel Jacobs. He backed him up. He's backing up the bigger Kovalev. He backed up Rocky Fielding. So it goes to show you that the smaller man can back up the bigger man just on timing and explosiveness and speed. Kovalev landing 16 punches in that last eighth round, according to CompuBox, and that's the best totals of the fight for him so far. Here's the question I have as we get towards the championship rounds. Does Sergey Kovalev believe he can jab his way to a victory against Canelo Alvarez? Because I haven't seen him throw too many of those consequential right hands that have ended a lot of fights. Good stiff jab right there by Kovalev. Look, Buddy McGirt, the way he no, went after him in the no. corner, he went forward with the shoulder there. Don't get a warning, rightly so, by Russell okay? Mora. Okay? The way Buddy McGirt, Chris, okay. went at him in the corner was like, you, you got a jab, jab for real. Now, keep this man off you. And that's in round eight again. 16 shots landed only nine by Canelo, who evidently did take that round off. He just stop. cruised through that. Now Russell Moore telling him to stop. Unfortunately, that punch didn't land clean. Kovalev trying to mix it up a little bit now. Stop. Little right hand answer by Kovalev. Maybe not quite the right hand that put Andre Ward down, but it still landed cleanly and is a clean scoring shot. Here comes Canelo. Landed that hook. Kovalev answers with his jab. Full minute left. Things could pick up here. Watch that right angle. Sergey Kovalev. A couple of minutes ago, it looked like a tweak. And I've seen that happen in basketball a lot, where the guy steps down and twists him. Did that, that a couple of minutes ago. That, that was a hard body shot answer by Canelo. Stop! And that's exactly what he's been doing the entire fight. He's been rolling with any big shot that Kovalev throws, just to roll and come back in a counter to the body, just like that. I expected a calculating crusher, but this is a very cautious Kovalev crusher. You wonder, can he keep this energy up? He has done well. Round eight. You got to figure he won that round. There's a double jab by Kovalev. He is going to have to finish with a flourish. He's going to have to pile up more than likely a few more rounds to actually win this fight. This is it right here. Right there, he's, he's kind of flinched even before he let that left hand, the power jab go, because he's waiting for that counter of Canelo. He flinched before he even released the jab, the power jab. Stay low when he gets close. Canelo Alvarez told us that he thinks Kovalev is the best light heavyweight in the world, saying he is the most accomplished. I believe that. The division has definitely picked up in the last few weeks. Artur Betterbiev stopping Alexander Volstic two weeks ago. He has two of the belts. Dimitri Bivol here on the zone beat Lenin Castillo three weeks ago. And Chris Mannix giving the ninth round to Sergey Kovalev. And now he gets back into the fight. So according to you, Chris, and this is just an indicator, we're judging this unofficially. This is a close fight. Close fight. The jab of Sergey Kovalev and the accuracy of it will be under consideration, and the power punching of Canelo Alvarez, which he has been the better fighter for. Canelo pressing a little bit more now, moving in with a little more danger, a little more menace, trying to look for a shot. 
If this was his plan, you would figure you would get to round 10, these championship rounds, and then press your advantage. Claudia Trejos is with Buddy McGirt. Thank right you, BK. Now. Thank you, BK. Buddy, how do you see the fight after nine? I can't hear you, man. How do you see this fight after nine rounds? It's still close, but you know, I'm quite sure they're going to have Canelo ahead. You know, we're in Las Vegas, but anyway, no excuse. I mean, he, right now he's doing what he has to do. We're trying to find our rhythm, but we still got a couple more rounds left. We mentioned something about the right hand that was causing problems with the counterpunch of Canelo. How did you know he was? He was countering Sergey's right hand with the left hook. So I told Sergey, fake the right hand, and then when he throws the hook, then you count him. Thank you, buddy. Brian? Claudia, thank you. That was a dangerous hook by Canelo. Now, Buddy mentioned the judges. Certainly, we know who the, the money man is here. We asked Kovalev about that. Chris, you asked him, and, and Kovalev said, I, I can't worry about that, even given what's happened in my career. He knows where he is, and he knows the history of Canelo winning close decisions in Las Vegas. All that being said, I respect Buddy McGurk, but if you have a problem with the judges, jump up and down and scream during fight week. I mean, make a scene about it. If you have a problem with Don Trella or David Reddy or Julie Letterman, say it. Be public about it. I, I, I don't know if I like the after the fact Monday morning quarter. Mm -hmm. Final minute, round 10. Canelo came into this round looking to pick things up, put a hurt on Kovalev. Has not done it, really. Kovalev with a decent edge these last two rounds, 34 to 22. And... You know, I don't know. We've been surprised already here tonight, fellas, with what we've seen with the judges. It's very subjective, sometimes difficult to score. We have mentioned this in the past. Normally, a Canelo fight is pretty clear cut. Easy to see his shots. Traditional, straight up the middle. Maybe not here tonight. A rare uppercut from Canelo, and he misses with a hook at the end of round 10. And we have seen several moments in this fight where it looked like it was going to be Canelo time, but it has not happened. This fight could be close. Perhaps Canelo is winning these rounds as he comes out firing in round 11. However, if you're just watching this, 29-year-old middleweight champion looking to make history, he's never fought a stinker, fellas, and yet he comes in here now. It is time to do some damage. Well, you got to give Sergey Kovalev a ton of credit for the discipline he's shown in this fight. He continues to throw that jab. The only question I've had, he hasn't thrown that big right hand. He's been a little bit tentative on that. Probably, as Sergio pointed out, he knows what's coming back when he releases it. Canelo now throwing a few more uppercuts, two in this round already, and that one landed, and then a right hand. He's getting closer. He's looking to put a hurt on Kovalev in this round. This is with the right hand. Kovalev able to box effectively and also move. That is the bigger man. A man who's been at 175 pounds his whole career, basically. And he is the guy backing up off, on his bike, staying away from the middleweight check. A lot of respect has been shown by both fighters, both men. If this fight is close, then Kovalev followed his strategy and, and his game plan just like he wanted to. But he hasn't really landed something that gets the respect of Canelo. Like, he's a crushing puncher, but he hasn't really developed into the crushing puncher because he... Canelo's not giving him that opportunity with the counters. And you see the landed punches. It's about even. There's a hook from Kovalev. However, not all punches are created equally. Canelo certainly with a lot more oomph on his shots. And there's a good body shot. Right hand by Alvarez. Canelo, Sergio, I'm always waiting for fifth gear. I think I'm still waiting for fourth gear. Canelo, Canelo's not right even hand. having to move his head because Kovalev's not even committing to the There it is. Kovalev's hurt. Kovalev's down. Kovalev's out. It's over. That fast. There's fifth gear. Canelo is the light heavyweight champion of the world. Canelo asking the fans to wait till Kovalev gets up, doing the classy, respectful thing, as he always is. He came right over to see Kovalev, and wow, that is a game plan expertly followed. Suddenly, Canelo 
throws it into another gear, and that quickly, Kovalev is out and almost out of the ring. And that's a champion closing out the fight, knocking out the crusher in the championship round. All right, Sergio, I said there's winning and there's winning impressively. Okay, that's winning impressively. An incredible job by Canelo there in round 11. It seems like he was biding his time. Canelo knew this was going to happen. Kovalev never committed with his power that he's known for, and that's the reason why. Patience and poise. There had to be a little bit of concern in the corner. He was told by his corner, we're going to get him. Don't worry. And Canelo Alvarez did just that. Wow, a sudden explosion from the middleweight champ, who now has one of the belts at 175. And for Canelo moving up in weight, being able to knock out the bigger man in the 11th round, in the championship round, being able to carry that power into his final rounds really says a lot about Canelo Alvarez. It was a chopping, it was a chopping right hook that caught the Kovalev's attention. And that left hook just finished it off. But it was a chopping right, right hook at first, the left hand, and the right, I mean, right it, after that, it, it was body one limp. Hard, hard shots, and yet Sergio clinical in a way. You see, even in slow motion, how calm he was, how short those shots were. It was clinical, it was surgical, it was violent. And that is maybe the most vicious KO of Canelo's career. He took out Amir Khan, James Kirkland in spectacular fashion. But look at that right hand. I believe Kovalev is back up on his feet. Certainly some concern after a knockout like that. But I believe Kovalev is up on his feet. Yes, he is. And hopefully he is OK. You see right there, Russell Moore trying to get in but let that last shot go through. Hey, it's a championship fight. And wow, in the 11th round. Joe Martinez, let's go to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 15 seconds, round number 11. Referee Russell Mora steps in, puts a halt to the bout. Your winner by KO victory. And now a four division world champion. He is the new WBO 